Located along Gong Road, Impala Furniture deals in custom-made furniture for both office and home furniture. Today we catch up with Wanjiku Muhia who runs the Impala Furniture, an unusual industry for most ladies to venture in. But for Wanjiku Muhia, usichague kazi. I'm Wanjiku Muhia and I run Impala Furniture. This is where we work from, to Kongong Road. And we deal in custom-made furniture, office and home furniture, where we try and solve the pain for a client wanting exactly something that is custom-made for them or their office. And they cannot, or you don't even have the time to do that. So we take away that pain for, we are going to take your order, the measurements according to your preference and make sure that you get your item on on time. That's what we do. I started Impala Furniture because I wanted furniture first. But then, as you can see, the market on Gong Road is very flooded, where everybody makes uh, kind of similar stuff. But then there was nothing specifically for if I want my couch to look a certain way or if I want my table to look a certain way, there wasn't. Because I did a bit of research on Gong Road because this is where I wanted to be. So with that in mind, I tested with um, just talking to my friends and asking them, if I, you wanted furniture just custom made for you, would you be willing to give me a deposit and I start your, and I make your furniture? So the first item we did was a bed and the client liked it and she referred me to somebody else who gave me a deposit and we custom made a table for them and the rest is history. My plan worked, my, my not plan, but my, the way I wanted to do the business, that model for custom making furniture, it worked. Wanjiku enlightens us on what she required to begin the business and telling us how the market has been for the period she has been in the furniture industry. One, I needed to have somebody who wanted furniture because, I mean, like I said, I was broke. I couldn't have any money to start or capital to start the business. So with a bit of research, with where I wanted to go, I wanted to be on Gong Road because I had um, I've lived here a bit, so I knew I wanted to be on Gong Road. Then I, you needed to know where this, does this wood come from? How much quantity do I need to buy? Do you buy per item? Do I need to stock up on wood? Do I need um, do I need a location? What machines do I need to make a certain item? Where do you source for all this stuff? And also, especially being a first-time person in furniture, you also need to know um, how do you even get a fundi? Who do you talk to? The material, that was my hardest part actually. <laughs> because one, I'm a girl, so uh, when I went to the workshops, no, to the like wood suppliers, they are skeptical about like, are you sure unataka this amount of bow? Are you sure unataka kutengeneza na this type of wood? Why don't you try this? But um, on Gong Road, there's a lot of guys who sell their materials. So what I did, I got, I befriended a fundi who used to go with me. Unaenda Nakombia, if you want mahogany wood, these are the best guys who you can buy from. If you want um, block wood, this is where you get from. If you want uh, like dry wood, we buy them from industrial area. Those are things that I, I just befriended one fundi who was gracious enough to hold my hand and show me even where to get nails and who will give you a good deal. Where can you buy these things on wholesale? But most of my items are from Gong Road. There are many wood sellers, um, fabric sellers. There are some on Gong Road. If it's for the couches, Kunawatu who are selling the foam. If it's the um, uh, finishing stuff like paint and stuff. Oh, and the good thing is, once you learn the business, there are guys who are willing to work with you, like they can give you credit. And then, but those are relationships you build with time. But how does she cope up with the immensely growing competition? I'm, I'm on Gong Road, man, where this is like the IKEA of Nairobi, where furniture eco flooded Kabisa. But um, our niche is custom made furniture, which uh, you wouldn't find much on Gong Road. 
custom made in terms of I work from the from the word go with the client. Like we'll work from the start to the end, even to choosing the wood. I want this type of wood. I want this type of finishing. I want this type. So I think that model has been working for me. So that's where I think our success is coming from. And then I have a great team also who. Uh, if it's production of stuff, of the furniture, they are very supportive. Not to keep it on a timeline, we try and stick to the timeline. Sometimes weather and a little glitches here and there come and uh, you're not able to deliver on time, but the reliability, effective fundis, uh, knowing where to get my materials on time, all those things are contributed to our success. So I can say, yes, there's a lot of competition, but we are doing good. The things that go around even pricing our products are a lot and um, so like you an example of something like a solid wood coffee table we will make sure we might be a little bit pricier because we'll make sure we buy dried wood and dried wood is a little bit expensive than the wood where I can buy here on Gong Road and wait for it to uh, to dry which lengthens the time of production but with dry wood, which is available, um, the customer is assured of the quality and you're also assured that your product won't warp and you get to do the repeats and all of that. So pricing, I could say uh, we, are, we are relatively equal or same with guys on Gong Road, but it always depends on what kind of wood you choose then again, I said we custom make our furniture, so it won't mostly be the typical table or the typical wardrobe. So we are fairly priced, I can say that. Our goods are fairly priced, Kulingana na materials. Wanjiku talks to us of the many challenges the business faces and some of which have become unavoidable. The, the ones that we cannot control is weather. Like you can see, we do a lot of paint work. And when it's raining or the weather is cold, uh, we don't prosper. <laughs> That's a huge, huge challenge when it comes to finishing a product. The other one is um, uh, prices of materials. Sometimes they fluctuate quickly without even you um, giving you, without them giving you a notice. So say I've already costed a table and the price of my material changes tomorrow. You see, I take the heat because I can call you and say, hey, you ordered a table at 10,000 shillings, but now I need you to add for me 3,000 because um, the price of paint has gone up. That won't happen. That's another challenge. The other one is um, fundies. <laughs> Sometimes if you don't get the committed guy, uh, it's a challenge because your work will stop. Um, the other one is most of the time um, you find that you have to source for your materials yourself, like myself. Sometimes I need to source for my materials, which takes away time for me to be out of the workshop. Because when you're doing custom-made furniture, I want to get you exactly what you and I decided. So I feel comfortable when I'm the one who is sourcing for all that material, which takes some time. Um, basically, just that. And sometimes guys just undercutting you on pricing. When they come and you consult and they see your product, then they go somewhere else and you find your product being made somewhere else because somebody undercuts you by like 2,000 bob. Yeah, which are no more in the business world, especially when I'm working next to so many people doing furniture. For every business, marketing is a key component that almost every entrepreneur exercises. I can say honestly, Instagram works for me uh, to a certain percentage, the biggest chunk. And then now, after being in the business for a while, a lot of referrals. I have a lot of referrals and a lot of repeat customers. So the business is kind of multiplying itself. Because if I do a good job for you, I mean, it would be hard for you to tell the other person. So a lot of referrals a lot of repeat customers and online. So I'm on Instagram, I'm on at Impala Furniture, I'm on Facebook at Impala Furniture, and sometimes on LinkedIn a little bit. But mostly online business has been working for me. 
Also, I advertise a lot. I put in some money for on online, uh, mostly Instagram. Let me talk to the girls first, <laughs> because being being a woman and on in this kind of industry, there is a lot of image image issues like. If you meet me Uko on Gong Road carrying wood, um, most guys, even my friends, ask me, I don't understand how you do this. But the image issue, like, don't let that be a hindrance. Also, do your market research. Don't be afraid to ask people, because before I started, I was afraid of asking uh, other fundies or other workshop owners, uh, biz furniture business owners. Um, don't also be afraid to interact with the entrepreneurs. Like, and uh, nowadays there are a lot of um, they're called pop-up markets where guys are running small businesses. Like the famous one, the flea market at K1, I think. You go there and you meet people and you see uh, business ideas, and there are people who are gracious enough to help you start. Like me, the guy who helped me to show me where to get the wood, where to how much I should expect it to be if a fundi charges me a certain price, is it fair? You see, there are guys who are out there who are willing to help you, but they won't help you unless you go out there, put yourself out there and go and ask. Yeah, Usio Gope, basically.